Hey, this is Professor Perez from Saddleback College again. Today we're going to do factoring trinomials using the ABC methods. Now, there are a lot of uh, methods for factoring trinomials. I'm going to stick to the very uh, basic ones that was presented in beginning algebra, and that was the ABC method. And we'll talk about the ABC method as we uh, go through this lecture. I will be doing some other presentations of factoring trinomials using the shortcut method, guess and check, cartwheel, backflip, somersault, or whatever other things that uh, people came up with, but we're going to start with this one. So, here we go. And of course, we got to have Charlie. He better be ready. Hey, Charlie, you ready to go? Uh, yeah? How'd you like that factoring by grouping? Oh, okay. Yeah, you better have liked it. Uh, anyway, um, and by the way, if you'd like to know when you're going to be using factoring in real life, yeah, I will let you know right now. You will be factoring what? in real life on the next exam oh. and the final exam. Jeez. And if you haven't learned how to do it, you'll be doing it next semester. <coughs> hopefully in the next class. Intermediate algebra. Anyway, let's get to work here. So here we go. We're going to factor trinomials of the form ax squared plus bx plus c. Notice the first term has an x squared term, the second middle term has an x in it, and there are no x's in the last term, that's our constant term. And our coefficients are the a, which is the ax squared, and then you have the b for the bx, and our constant is denoted by that c there. Okay, so our first problem that we're going to work with is 6x squared plus 11x plus 4. This is a trinomial that we are going to factor. You'll see that this would be very similar to factoring by grouping, which was the previous lecture, and I hope you watched that. Okay, so here we go. Well, what is our a term, Charlie? Look up there. The a is the what? 6 is the 6. Now, how about the b? 11. That is the 11, and the c is the what? 4. It's a plus 4. Now, because it's 6x squared plus 11x, b is a plus 11, a positive 11. And because at the end there's a plus 4, the c is a plus 4. If it had been a subtract 4 at the end, that c would have been a negative 4. But because we have the plus 4, it's a positive 4 there. Okay, there we go. Now, here is the ABC method. We need to find two factors of a times c that sum to b. Now, remember, our a was 6, and our c was 4, right? And so, Charlie, what's a times c? 24. 24, and our b term is the 11, okay? So we need to find two factors of a times c that sum to b, and then what we are going to do, we will use those, these factors here to rewrite the middle term. That, now, that middle term is the plus 11x. Now, there are different rate, ways to write plus 11x using two terms. You could write plus 10x plus 1, x. that's 11x, or you can use plus 9x plus 2x, that's 11x, okay, or plus 8x plus 3x, right? All those give you 11x. But we're looking for the specific factors of a times c to rewrite that plus 11x. Why are we going to do that? Because what we're going to do is if we write, rewrite that plus 11x, we're using two terms, then we will have four terms. And if we have four terms, that's where we do the factoring by grouping, okay? So, we will use these factors to rewrite the middle term of the trinomial, okay? In this example, our middle term is that 11x, there we go. And now, rewriting the middle term with the found factors will give us the four terms. And we need those four terms so that we can factor by Grouping. Okay, so here we go, Charlie. Now, what's the A times C, Charlie? 24. 24, that's right. Now, here is a process for to help you out finding the factors of A times C that sum to B, okay? We're not going to try and be guessing, right? What we're going to do is we're going to try to develop a little format that works, and then as you understand how this works, then you can go to the guess and check method, the backflip, uh, cartwheel method, somersault, and all those other things that people came up with, but... Okay, but let's learn things very basically here. Okay, so a times c is 24, and we'll start with 24 times 1. Now, 24 times 1 do multiply to 24. Now, we want to also look at their sum. So think about this. 24 times 1 is 24. Now, Charlie, what's 24 plus 1? 
25. That is 25, and that is the sum. Now, does that sum equal the B term, Charlie? No. No, because our B was an 11. We're looking for the 11. So, now here's a technique we're going to use. Notice here we have a, a 24 and a 1 there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take half of 24. Charlie, what's half of 24 divided by 2? 12. That's a 12, okay? Now, if you take half of that first factor, meaning you're divided by 2, you must multiply the other factor by 2. So notice, 24 divided by 2 is 12, and 1 times 2 is how much, Charlie? 2 is 2. And it makes sense, because 12 times 2 is 24. Okay, Charlie, what do those sum to? 14. 14, right? Okay, is 14 our middle term? No. No, it's not. If our middle term was a 14x, then we would use those two factors to rewrite that middle term. But we're looking for a sum of 11. So, let's go on again. Let's take the 12 and divide by 2, Charlie. What do you get? 6. 6. Now, since I divided the 12 by 2, i got to go to the 2 and multiply by 2. And what does that give you, Charlie? 4. A 4. And notice, 6 times 4 is 24. And what do they sum to, Charlie? 10. 10. They sum to 10. Okay. And so, that still is not the B term. So we've got to continue on. Let's go on now. Okay, now again, Charlie, what's half of 6? 3. That is 3. Now what's 4 times 2? 8. There's the 8. And it makes sense. 3 times 8 is 24. Hopefully you don't need a calculator for that. 3 times 8 is 24. And 3 plus 8, the sum of those two numbers is how much, Charlie? 11. 11. And that is our B term. So there we are. Those are the factors there. The 3 times 8, I mean, those are the factors of 24 that sum to 11. So let's circle out 11. Okay. And write this note here. These are the factors we will use to rewrite the middle term. 3 and 8. Now, you can have those in any order. You could put 8 times 3 or 3 times 8. You'll see what I mean. Okay, so let's go back to our problem now. 6x squared. And now what we're going to do is take that plus 11x and rewrite plus 11x using the 3 and the 8. Okay, using the 3 and the 8. So we have 11x and we're going to have the 3x right there, up there. And then you're going to have the 8x. Okay, so there it is there. Notice there's a 3 and 8. And don't forget to bring down the plus 4 at the end. Now notice here, the 3 and the 8, there they are. There's the 3x plus the 8x. And if you combine the terms, of course, 3x plus 8x is 11x. Okay? Now, let's rewrite our problem here. 6x squared plus 3x plus 8x plus 4. Okay? And now, what we're going to do is we have four terms now. So we go back to the previous lecture, which was factoring by grouping. Charlie's favorite subject here. Okay, so we form our two groups there. Now, Charlie, what's the greatest common factor for the first group? Can you do this one? 3x. It is a 3x. There we go. Okay, so we'll bring our parentheses. Okay, now, Charlie, what do I multiply 3x by to get that 6x squared plus 3x? Let's see if you do it all at once. 2x plus 1. Very nice, Charlie. It is 2x plus 1. You've been paying attention. Now, Charlie, here comes your favorite step. What do we do? Cheat. We cheat. There we go. So there's the 2x plus 1 up there. Okay. And now, Charlie, what's the greatest common factor for the second group? What makes it work there? Plus 4. It is a plus 4. Very nice there. And so now, again, we look at our two groups there. And we notice that 2x plus 1 is in both groups up there. So we're going to take that out, Charlie. We're going to take out the 2x plus 1. And there it is. We take it out. Now, Charlie, what's left over there? 3x plus 4. 3x plus 4. There we go. And that is our final answer. Don't forget to box it. So there you go. You're factoring trinomials using the ABC method. Okay, now that was a base, very basic.